HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton High School for Hopkinton Hillers Softball on HCAM. It's Tuesday, April 16th, and we have a April vacation, 11 a.m. start between Lincoln Sudbury and the Hopkinton Hillers. And we are just about to get underway between Lincoln Sudbury and Hopkinton. Let's take a look at the Lincoln Sudbury lineup. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklett on the call, Bob, uh, Bob uh, <laughs> John Ritz on camera. And the Lincoln Sudbury lineup is Margaret Costa, third baseman, Ava Lynch, the second baseman, Kirsten Kelly, the shortstop, Amanda Cork, the center fielder, Jen Grouse, the first baseman, is batting fifth. Emma Mahoney, the designated player, hitting six as the first pitch is low for a ball. Elise Diamond, the catcher, hitting seventh. Ellie Marchand, the center fielder, hitting eighth. And Monica Siafi, the right fielder, hitting ninth. And that pitch just a little bit outside, a 2 and 0 count. And for the Hillers defense, we send it to Larry Sacklad. At third base, Krista McCluskey, shortstop Alyssa McIntyre, second base, Emily Whalen. At first base, Catherine Morse. Left field, Jordan Chevery, center field, ball, Katie Holly. In right field, Sienna Harrigan. Behind the plate today is Carly Stevens catching Charlotte Can. So a walk to start things off to Margaret Costa, and now Ava Lynch steps in. And there's a bunt up the middle, picked up by Can. Throw to first, not in time. And now the throw to third to get the lead runner, and they get her. Margaret Coster was trying to sneak by for the extra bag, and they caught her trying to advance. Some aggressive base running on the part of Lincoln Sudbury right out of the box. So you can credit Ava Lynch with the single, but Margaret Costa thrown out for the first out of the game. And now Kirsten Kelly steps in. That one's fouled away. Taking off from first is Ava Lynch. She is safely bored over at second base. I have to give her a pass ball, unfortunately. And this is up the middle. That'll get into center field on the ground. Runner being waved around. The throw to the plate is not in time, and the run scores. Boy, was that close, Larry. Ball was there, the tag was not. Right underneath the tag. Good throw from Katie Hawley in center field. An RBI single for Kirsten Kelly. She advances to second on the throw in. Miller's 3-0 and on this season. It's been a good start to the year for Hopkinton as Amanda Quirk steps in. All she needed to do with that throw was to use one hand and she would have had her out. And this is up the middle, and a great play by the shortstop, Alyssa McIntyre, but she has nowhere to go with it. Everybody's safe. Kelly advances to third, Quirk up to first on the single. Jen Gross, the first baseman, will step in. Well, Hopkinton finds themselves in an unusual position so far this year. They are trailing. Lincoln Sudbury did beat Acton Boxborough with no harm on that. And... A stolen base by Quirk, checking at third on Kelly. That's a smart play there by the Hillers, not trying to catch the runner stealing because you know that they were gonna send Kelly home if they threw over to second. Swing and a miss. One and one is the count. Well, Larry, you said it coming into the game today. This Lincoln Sudbury team Seems to have a lot of talent. It should be a good battle here today. I'm sure Charlotte Can has seen in club ball some of these Lincoln Sudbury players. 
They're in the same area code anyway. And this is up the middle. That'll get through everybody. One run is in. And it's an RBI single for Jen Grouse. She advances on the throw in. 2 nothing Lincoln Sudbury. Kristen Kelly scores. And now Emma Mahoney, the designated player, will step in. That was a little fundamental error with the Hillers. That ball was overthrown to the cutoff in the pitcher's circle. Had that ball been cut off, they would have held that runner at first. First pitch in there for a strike. Runners on second and third. One out for Lincoln Sudbury. Two runs are in. There's a strike. Oh and two on Mahoney. Can set to deal upstairs. Charlotte Kant does not have her usual battery mate today. Miss Cedia is over in France or somewhere. That pitch just outside. Actually, they got her for the full count now. Line up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Out number two. Throw down at third base. Carly Stevens is uh, pretty aggressive behind the plate. Threw behind the runner. Elise Diamond steps in. That's Neil's niece, I think, right? Not sure. There's a strike. If Hopkins can get out of this inning with just two runs. Ripped up the middle, grab by the shortstop, throw to first, not a problem. Six to three for out number three, but not before Lincoln Sudbury plates two runs and it's two nothing Lincoln Sudbury as we head to the bottom of the first on each cam. Welcome back to Hopkinton High School. We are set for the bottom of the first. The Hopkinton Hillers coming up to the plate, trailing two to nothing. Let's take a look at the lineup. Emily Whalen, the second baseman, leading things off. Kristen McCluskey, the third baseman, batting second. Katie Hawley, the center fielder, hitting third. Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop, batting cleanup. Jordan Chevery, the left fielder, hitting fifth. Charlotte Can, the pitcher, hitting sixth. Carly Stevens, the catcher, hitting seventh. Catherine Morris, the first baseman, hitting eighth. And Sienna Harrigan, the right fielder, hitting ninth. In just a moment, Larry Sacklad will let you know about the Lincoln Sudbury defense. Third base, Margo Costa. Kristen Kelly at second base. Second base, Ava Lynch. Jen Grouse at first base. Ellie Marchand, no relation. Ball. Amanda Quirk in center, Monica Kioffi in the right field, Elise Diamond behind the plate catching Emily Fisher. Emily Fisher set to deliver. The pitch just outside. There's a strike. Tom, it looks like Lincoln Sudbury will provide the Hillers a little bit of competition, unlike their three previous opponents who they just destroyed. And this is a slow roller up the middle, and that was picked up by the second baseman, Lynch, playing way in, and it pays off there, a 4-3 to three out. Larry, taking a look at the pitcher here, it's number 15 out there on the lineup. It's listed as Mahoney, who was the designated player. Fisher was supposed to be the flex pitcher. I wonder if there was a change prior to the game. We'll certainly have to find out. You are correct. Second baseman saw that Emily Whalen was jumping up in the box to slap hit. She smartly moved in, and that's why she was able to race Whalen easily. Emma Mahoney delivers a strike. 
And we'll go with the numbers listed on the lineup card. Kluski has had a pretty good start to the season. Takes a the ball there, one and one. And this is a rocket in the left field. That'll drop in for a one out base hit. Katie Hawley, the center fielder, will step in now. Watching the Lincoln Sudbury girls warm up before game. Catcher looks like she has a strong throwing arm. So we'll see what Hopkinton does with the run game if there's any bobble behind the plate. And this is a foul ball. Just in front of the plate there. So they were playing a little hit and run there, Tom? I think so. And there's a strike, and the runner from first takes off. A stolen base for McCluskey. Looked like McCluskey almost overslid the bag, but she walked back up on the bag and didn't allow for a tag. It's a 1-1 one -one count on Hawley. Emma Mahoney has made three appearances on the mound for Lincoln Sudbury, a 2.33 ERA so far this season. 15 innings pitched. She's given up 15 hits, eight runs, five of those earned, and has struck out 12. Lincoln Sudbury two and one on the season. That pitch is just low. Two and two is the count. Hiller softball right back in action tomorrow morning against Milford for an 11 a.m. start. A pitch up high. You Full bringing count. coffee to that game, Tom? I think so. We'll go through the Lincoln Sudbury schedule as well as the Hiller schedule momentarily as that's filed away. Lincoln Sudbury started off the season on April 3rd with a win over Natick 10 to six. They then defeated North Andover on April 9th, 3 to 2 in 8 innings, and then lost to Acton Boxborough last game on the 10th, 19 to nothing. That pitch just high, and Katie Holly draws the walk. Two on, one out. Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop to the plate. I have a feeling we could have a high scoring affair here today, Larry. I don't know, I don't know. But Alyssa McIntyre is hitting in the four hole today, which would normally be occupied by Jillian Cedia, who we saw last game hit one over the fence. A prodigious shot. Hiller's 3-0 and on the season as Alyssa McIntyre takes strike one. Hiller started off the season on April 10th with a 25-5 win over Hollison. They then took down Dover Sherborne 16-1. Both those games were at home. Then on the 12th, a road win over Ashland, 10 to three. As this is lined in the center, that'll drop down. Lead runner being waved around, the throw in, in time. And I believe they got her. They did. Nice throw from the center fielder. So McCluskey's thrown out trying to score. Katie Holly to third. A single for Alyssa McIntyre. She advances on the throw in. Jordan Chevery will step in, the left fielder. It was a nice throw by Amanda Quark to get McCluskey at the plate for the second out of the inning as that pitch outside. You got Ava Lynch, second baseman, coming back in there and now stepping back out. I think they know the Hillers have a whole lot of speed, not afraid to lay down a bunt or two. 
Pitch fouled away by Chevery, one and one. Chevery hitting a 643 through the first four games of the season. Two and one now. She's one of the returning members from last year's squad that made it all the way to the quarterfinals, the playoffs. She's ultimately nice. lost to King Phillip. Yep. And this is up the middle. That'll get through the reach of the second baseman. One run is in. And the lead runner behind her is held up at third. A good call there. But it is a two to one ball game, an RBI single for Chevery. Katie Hawley comes around to score. Alyssa McIntyre up to third. Charlotte can the pitcher to the plate. Let's see what Shannon will do. Will she send the runner? A pitch just outside. Charlotte Ken has had five at bats so far. No hits as of yet. She's batting a thousand then, right? <laughs> the opposite. For Chevrolet, that was her seventh RBI of the season. That pitch down low, runner from first taking off, an easy steal there for Chevery. Two zero, swing and a miss. Nothing but the nothing but air there, Tom. This is mano a mano, opposite numbers. There's a strike. Looked a little bit outside from my vantage point. The 2-2 upstairs. Full count now on Can. Runners on second and third for the Hillers. One is in. Two outs in the inning, a 2-1 Lincoln Sudbury lead. And a swing and a miss there to wrap up an exciting first inning after one inning of play. It's a Lincoln Sudbury two, the Hopkinton Hillers one. To the top of the second we go on HCAM. Top half of the second inning, eight, nine, and one, due up for Lincoln Sudbury. Ellie Marchand will step in. A two to one lead for Lincoln Sudbury. Charlotte Can set to pitch her second inning this afternoon. And the first pitch just a little bit high, says the umpire. Well, Kristen Kelly drove in Ava Lynch, and Jen Gross drove in Kristen Kelly for the two runs for Lincoln Sudbury. There's strike one. Two runs on four hits last inning. Fouled away. One and two. And this is on the ground, bobbled by Can, picked up, throw to first, not in time. So Marsham beats it out for the leadoff single. And now Monica Chiaffi, the right fielder, will step in. Uh, credit Can with an error on that one. Yeah, there was a little bobble there, so I think you're right. You don't want to elevate Lincoln Sudbury's batting average, do you? No. Nah. And this is a fair ball, throw to first, and they get one. Good hustle on the home plate umpire, covering third base. So a five to three out for Chiaffi. She does push Marshan to second, and Margaret Costa will step into the batter's box. If you're wondering about the dimensions of a Little League uh, field versus a softball field, they're exactly the same. 
And there's a strike. 60-foot base pass, 84 feet from home plate to second, and the pitching rubber, 46 feet to home plate. Mark Costa walked in her first at bat. That pitch is way high, and that'll allow Marshan to advance to third on the wild pitch. So one out, runner on third for Lincoln Sudbury. Can't held on to that ball like it was stuck to her hand. That's why it went way over the catcher's head. Pitch down low. Margaret Costa on the season is five for nine at the plate. That's good for a 556 batting average. Four runs scored, two driven in. There's a strike. Two and two. Swing and a miss, out number two. Big strike out there for Can. The Charlie Green Giant wouldn't have been able to get a bat on that ball. Way out of the strike zone. Ava Lynch will step in. She's two for eight overall at the plate. One run scored, that pitch up high. She actually did score her second run of the season today. Turned out to be a nice day, Tom. Supposed to be very gusty winds. So far, so good. Right to Emily Whalen, and that is out number three. A quick top half of the second for the Hillers defense. It's two to one Lincoln Sudbury as we head to the bottom of the second on H Cam. Bottom of the second, a two to one lead for Lincoln Sudbury. Stepping in for the Hillers, Carly Stevens. Emma Mahoney set to deliver. And that one just a little bit low, one and oh. H Cam Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill. Located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. The 1-0. Up the middle, picked up by the second baseman, and a four to three out. That'll bring up Catherine Morse, the first baseman for the Hillers. She's taken the place of Bella Anzi today. And Catherine Morse not listed in the statistics, so I think this might be her first at bat of the season. She takes O and one there. Down low. Nice block by the catcher. Since it's April vacation, some of the boys varsity team was contemplating going to China because they take Mandarin classes, but they put that on hold. Swing and a miss. Hillers baseball got a nice win on Saturday against Barnstable. That was a long 100 and well, one hour and 28 minute ride home for Barnstable. Red Raiders lost 16 to one. Down low. That puts the Hopkins and Hillers baseball 14th in Eastern Mass ra rankings, according to the Boston Herald. Certainly an exciting team so far this season. A lot of talent, it seems. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. And this is a fair ball up the middle, picked up by the pitcher. The throw to first, not a problem. Two way. It'll bring up Sienna Harrigan, the right fielder. Swing and a miss. Very late on that swing. So I'm happy Larry Sacklad on the call. John Ritz on camera on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon. It's not quite bathing suit weather, but the sun feels really, really good. It certainly does. We should have a nice tan after the game today. The 1-1. One, one. And there for a strike. 
That looked like a changeup to me. Sienna was way out in front of that pitch. Of course, I'm blocked out by the Hopkinton first base coach. Set to deliver, down low. This is up the middle, past the reach of the second baseman. And that is going to be a two-out single for Harrigan. The right field that charged that ball and was hoping to get Harrigan at first base. Heads up play by the right fielder. I'll bring up Emily Whalen. She's a threat to bunt. She's a threat to slap hit the other way. Down low, runner taking off, throw to second. Not in time. Just got in there, Tom. It looked like she was going to be out by a step. Just made it. I'll tell you, certainly some aggressive base running going on in this game from both sides. I think the Hiller coaching staff knows this is going to be a close game, so every base they can get, they'll take. Sienna Harrigan's third stolen base of the season. That pitch was up high, three and zero. Oh. Will Emily Whalen have the take, or is she going to hit away? I got a feeling she's going to hit away if she likes it. And that pitch upstairs, and the runner will take off. Did she get a piece of that? No. Nope. Three and zero oh is the count. Scoreboard was off on that last pitch. Emily Whalen had a 471 mark on the season. 8 4 17. Takes a strike there. It's a very well coached team, I can see from their defensive rotation. Left fielder was coming in to back up the third base. Just in case it was a throwdown from the catcher. Seven runs scored on the season for Whalen. One driven in, and she might drive some in here as that'll get down, and a run is in. Whalen to second, and she will stop there. An RBI double to tie things up at two apiece. The left fielder was playing incredibly shallow, and that ball just hit the gap between left and center field. I thought right out of the box she was thinking three bases, but she pulled up for two. Kristen McCluskey steps in, and she has been red hot to start off the season. Seven for 10 at the plate. Six runs scored. No RBIs as of yet, but has an opportunity here. One bobble, and El Emily Whalen will take off. She's by far the fastest softball player I've seen in the TVL. The runner can leave as soon as it leaves the pitcher's hand, unlike Little Lake, where you have to wait till the ball crosses the plate. So Emily's staring at that pitcher's hand. Mahoney deals, this is hit high in the air over to left field and dropped! Whalen's gonna score, it's 3-2 Hillers! Well, that was a not play right there. Ball was right there, looked like a can of corn. And I don't think the sum was a factor. She just flat out dropped it. An error on the left fielder allows the run to score. It's 3-2 Hillers. Katie Holly steps in. All the meeting on the mound. Let's settle down the pitcher now. Meeting out in the outfield. What for, I don't know. Umpire's going to break this up. Come on, girls. There's no strategy here. Words of encouragement for the pitcher, Emma Mahoney. Katie Hawley, the captain this year, along with Emily Whalen. There's a line drive in the left field. That gets down. First and second for the Hillers with two down. Kluski up to second. Hawley board at first. 
Alyssa McIntyre will step in. Two outs, a run in, a pair of runs in this inning for the Hillers. It's a 3-2 lead now for Hopkinton. Alyssa McIntyre singled in the first inning. That ball really scoop, scoots on the turf, I'm Tom. Certainly does. Up the middle, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, and there is out number three. But not before the Hillers plate two runs. It's a 3-2 Hopkinton lead as we head to the top of the third on each cam. Top half of the third inning, a 3-2 Hillers lead. Two up for Lincoln Sudbury, 3-4 and 5 as Kristen Kelly's in there and takes a strike. It's Kristen Kelly, Amanda Cork, and Jen Grouse do up. Fouled away. Oh, and two count now. The 0 2. Fouled away. And it just cleared my car. Almost had to call Giant Glass, but they're out of business. One of the coaches from Lincoln Subbury used to coach at Ashland. Swing and a miss. We'll bring up Amanda Cork. That was a change up, Tom. She was way out in front of that pitch. Actually, speaking of Lincoln Sudbury, uh, Jim Girard, the former Hillers football coach, will be coaching the Lincoln Sudbury football program. Picked up by McIntyre, throw to first. Not in time. Good speed up the line by Cork. Here's Emma Mahoney at the plate. Going to face Charlotte Can. Pitch outside. Just a little bit outside. Charlotte Can, a 1.00 ERA. Checking out first, runner back safe. Count is two and oh. Can has pitched Seven innings so far. There's been a uh, couple of short games this season as the Hillers won by way of the mercy in their first two games. That was ugly ball. You like to see the Hillers win, but you don't like to see blowouts like that. Pitch up high. The other Hiller who's been getting a Good amount of time in the pitcher's circle is Julian Cedia. Excuse me, Juliana Cedia, freshman. And this is hit in the air right to the shortstop for the out. Two way. It'll bring up Emma Mahoney, the pitcher for Lincoln Sudbury. Fouled away. The 0 1. Hit high in the air. Backpedaling is the first baseman. Emily Whalen will call her off and make the catch for the third and final out of the top of the third to the bottom of the inning. We go. The Hillers leading Lake and Sudbury 3 to 2 on H Cam. Bottom of the third inning, Jordan Cheverie stepping in for the Hillers, the left fielder. A 3-2 lead for Hopkinton. Hillers put up one run in the bottom of the first, two more last inning. Strike one to Cheverie, who had an RBI single in the first inning to score Katie Holly. I want to understand the Lincoln Sudbury Warriors play on natural grass. It might explain not being used to playing on turf where the ball hits the turf and just scoots. Of course, the Hillers, having this as their home field, know how to play it. The 1-1, one, one. upstairs. Did you run the marathon yesterday, Tom? I did, I finished in uh, two hours. 
Was that you running down Boylston Street? I was thinking about it, but I slept late. <laughs> Filed away. Might have to go move my car in a little bit. <laughs> well, you're going to get a new one. You'll let the viewers at home know when you do, right? That's right. They'll be very interested in that fact. Charlotte Con on deck. Gets a piece of this one up the first base side, and that's a fair ball, and it's gonna roll all the way to the corner. And there goes Chevery over to second, and now she's off the bag, trying to get back, and she's tagged out. A base running mistake there by Chevery, and there's one away. I don't know whether she picked up the third base coach or not, but she was so far off the bag, she was caught in no woman's land. That'll bring up Charlotte Can. Well, you could have started off the inning with a nice double. But instead, you try for too much. That's what happens. Runners should pick up the third base coach about 15 feet before they hit the first uh, second base bag so they'll know whether to go or no go. But she did it on her own. Oh, and two. Kent struck out in her only at bat so far this game. Let's see if that base running mistake hurts the Hillers. That one upstairs, one and two. Two and two. Charlotte Kahn's feet are way up in the batter's box with a pitcher that throws with this type of velocity. It doesn't give her quite the opportunity to get her bat around. Swing and a miss, out number two. And therefore she's late. Carly Stevens, the catcher, steps in. Good crowd down here today for a vacation week. There's a strike. Both pitchers seem to be finding their groove. And this is a rocket up the middle. That'll get through for a two-out single. That base hit might have scored Sheppery had she not got thrown out at second base. I'll bring up Catherine Morse, the first baseman. Another pinch runner. Is that Heather C, though? It certainly is. Sebo into pinch run for Carly Stevens. Heather Sebo normally pinch runs for Jillian Cedia. We'll see her a few times in a game. Set to deliver. There's a strike. Lincoln Sudbury coach positioning his infielders. The 0 1 inside. Sebo thought about taking off, but it's back to the first base bag. She'll go on a bobble. She won't go on a clean catch, I don't think. There's a strike. The 
one two pitch. And there it is, strike three to wrap up the third inning. After three, it's the Hillers three, Lincoln Sudbury two. We'll head to the top of the fourth on HCAM. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Phil's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Top of the fourth inning, a 3-2 to two lead for the Hillers. In the batter's box is Lies Diamond, and she gets a piece of this one. Whalen backpedaling, and will make the catch. One away. Now bring up Ellie Marshan, the center fielder. These softball games tend to move along pretty quickly. There's a strike. Set to deliver, down low. Gets a piece of this one, that's fouled away. One and two. Emily Whalen heading out to UMass Amherst to play some softball. Her future Minutemen lost in the finals for the Frozen Four to Minnesota Duluth, three nothing. Pitch just outside. Did you watch that game, Tom? I did not. Yeah, they were out of it from the first minute and a half of the game. Inside there, a little chin music. That'll fill up the count. Up the middle, picked up by the shortstop. Throw to first, not a problem. That is good for out number two. That'll bring up Monica Chiaffi, the right fielder. Aside from being fast, the turf doesn't allow for really some bad bounces. Like the dirt infield over at field six. First pitch is a ball. Here's the 1-0. Down low. Look good to me, Tom, look good to me. Kiafi laid off that pitch. Joffey grounded out, hurling at bat this game so far. Swing and a miss. The way Lincoln Sudbury plays, I can't believe they got blown out 19-0. It's a pop-up down the shortstop. McIntyre underneath it, squeezes for the final out. There it is, a one, two, three, top of the fourth to the bottom of the inning we go. The Hillers leading Lincoln Sudbury three to two on H cam. Bottom of the fourth inning, a three to two Hillers lead. Starting things off for Hopkinton is Sienna Harrigan. Mahoney deals strike one. Emily Whalen do up next, and then Kristen McCluskey. Fouled away. The 0-2, hit in the air over to right field and it is caught. A little bobble there by the right fielder but she's able to pull it in. One away, Emily Whalen will step in. Now 
That's fouled away. Up the third base side, foul, 0 and 2. Pitch inside, good eye there, one and two. Down low. Two and two. Gets a piece of this one, and it's caught by the third baseman, two-way. Well, it started out as a offensive affair has quickly turned into a pitcher's duel. Kristen McCluskey will step in. And... It hit the bat, it looks like she squared up to bunt. And looks like it got a piece of the bat. And I think she was arguing that it hit her hand. Pitch inside, one and one. The one one fouled away. But in the process of a swing. It looks like she's going to take a seat and some obvious pain there. Trainer will check on her and we'll see what they do here. So it looks like we are going to have a pinch hitter here. It's going to be Tori Fisher, it appears. No crying in softball, they say. So Tori Fisher will step in as Kristen McCluskey was sh shooken up there after that foul ball. And it's more than likely from the ball hitting her in the hand on that called foul ball or prior to that last pitch. Swing and a miss by Fisher, and that'll wrap up the bottom of the fourth. To the top of the fifth we go. It is three to two Hillers leading Lincoln Sudbury on HCAM. Top half of the fifth inning, Tori Fisher has taken over at third base. <laughs> for Kristen McCluskey as Margaret Costa steps in for Lincoln Sudbury. The third baseman, she's 0 for 1 today with a walk. Will the Lincoln Sudbury coach try and take advantage of Fisher just coming into the game and drop a bunt down the third baseline? She's playing kind of deep down there. 
First pitch is down low, one and oh. Two and oh. Ken delivers up high, three and oh. Costa is the table setter here. One, two, and three. And there's a strike, three and one. Costa didn't like it. Gets a piece of this one up the left side and handled by Fisher for the first out. That'll bring up Ava Lynch, the second baseman. And she gets a good piece of this one over to center field, but Katie Holly perfectly positioned out number two. Kirsten Kelly will step in. That's the benefit of knowing your own home field. Katie Holly played that perfectly. She barely had to move. Upstairs. The 1-0, up the middle, past the reach of everybody. And that'll be a two-out single for Kelly. That'll bring up Amanda Quirk. Quirk. No relation to Jamie Quirk, formerly of the Kansas City Royal. Amanda Quirk, the center fielder, two for two today. Down low. So far, Lincoln Sudbury hasn't tried to challenge Carly Stevens behind the plate for Hopkinton. Two zero count up the middle, and that's off the glove of the shortstop. Everybody's safe. Got to score that a base hit, even though Alyssa McIntyre. Yeah, that was just an awkward ball to play. It was, took a bounce like literally right in front of her. Jen Grouse, the first baseman, will step in. If Khan could get through this foul ball. Oh, and one. The four, five, and six hitters. She'll get deeper into their lineup, where it's not so strong. Bunt pulled back, and that's strike two. Runners thought about taking off, but they return. Good defensive rotation by the Hillers. As soon as the first base Runner took off, Harrigan from right field ran in. There's strike three, a nice pitch there by Charlotte Can for the third out of the top of the fifth to the bottom of the inning we go. The Hiller is leading Lincoln Sudbury three to two on HCAM. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Bottom of the fifth. For the Hillers, Katie Holly stepping in. And this is a rocket up the right side. That'll get through for a leadoff single. Right fielder charged that ball, hoping to get Katie Holly at first base, which would have been a, if she tripped, she might have got, a, got her at first base, but no chance there. Alyssa McIntyre up now. She's got a chance to move the runner along. Alyssa McIntyre, one for two so far today, singled in the first inning. And therefore, a strike. 
Diamond popped up if, as if to throw down the first base. Try a back pick. Katie Hawley has really good speed. Maybe they'll test the arm of Diamond. Gets a piece of this one, a high fly ball. Backpedaling is the second baseman and she makes the catch. One away, one on. Warm up, act, warm up activity for Lincoln Sudbury. Got a lefty over there. Nice catch by Lynch as Jordan Chevery steps in. Well, it was kind of a routine play, Tom. I don't know how nice it was. <laughs> Pitch in there for a strike. Any little bobble by Diamond and Katie Holly will be off to the races. Gets a piece of this one up the left side. That'll drop in for a base hit. It'll be first and second with one out. Amanda Quirk kept that ball in front of her so Holly couldn't advance a base. Charlotte Can strides to the plate. She got a chance to help herself out here. Runners on first and second. Set to deliver, swing and a miss. Very late with that swing. Hillers really do miss Jillian Cedia in that lineup. The thumper. Outside. One and one. Katie Ollie had a really greedy lead out there at second base. She was almost down to where the shortstop plays. Swing and a miss. One and two. Not a big fan of those face masks on the infielders. The only one not wearing one is the shortstop. That's a strike three. Two away. Two remain on base. Carly Stevens will step in. She is one for two so far today. Grounded out and singled. Will the Hopkins and coach have Carly show bunt and have Katie Hawley steal. We'll see. Third baseman would come in charging in that case. There's a called strike. Swing and a miss, so and two. That was up around her eyes, Tom. She's really got to shorten up here with her swing. Just make some type of contact, give herself a chance. Just a little bit outside. Just a little bit outside. I thought she was heading back to the dugout. Mahoney set to deliver the one, two. Swing and a miss. There's out number three. And the end of the fifth. We will head to the top of the sixth. It's the Hillers leading Lincoln Sudbury, three to two on H Cam. Top half of the sixth inning due up for Lincoln Sudbury is six, seven, and eight. Emma Mahoney, Elise Diamond, and Ellie Marshan. A 3 to 2 lead for the Hillers. Charlotte Can has pitched a good game so far and remains out there in the pitcher's circle. She definitely doesn't want to leave this part of the lineup or let any part of this lineup on base be in the sixth inning, bottom part of the order. No free passes. The 0 1. In there. Oh, side, I thought that was one a and one. Yeah, I thought so too. 
we don't have the best angle for we do see high and low but upstairs two and one home plate is only 17 inches wide so it's tough for us to see there's a strike two and two And that's fouled off. Cow remains two and two. Lincoln Sudbury scored two runs in the top half of the first. The they Hillers, did. They definitely did. The Hillers responded with one in the bottom of the inning, and then the Hillers took the three to two lead in the bottom of the second. And that's been it for scoring, as it has turned into more of a pitcher's duel this afternoon. Charlotte Can has got a great defense behind her, so she should pitch accordingly. Swing and a miss, out number one. Ooh, feel the breeze. Take a seat. Looks like we have Hopkinton's finest here. We have the fire department over there in left field. Two police cruisers over here behind the plate. Wise Diamond steps in. Gets a piece of this one over to center field. That's off the wall. Around first she goes, heading to second. Picked up by Holly, and it's a stand-up double. That ball was really scorched. And Holly knew it. As soon as it went off the bat, she turned around and headed to the wall. So one out double for Diamond, and Ellie Marshan will step in with a chance to tie up this game. We do have Hopkin and Fire down here for what? That ball's fouled up the third baseline. Well, looks like they... Uh, this perhaps EMS. might be here for the injured Kristen McCluskey, or perhaps a fan got hit by a foul ball, I'm not sure. She's one and one. Squared around the bunt, and Katie Hawley streaking all the way in from center field to get in behind the runner, just in case. The one, one. Slow roller, picked up by the pitcher, throw to first, and they got her. Just in time. That advances the runner to third base. Nice play by Emily Whalen. Jeez, we've got public safety all around us here, Tom. You do anything this weekend? Not that I know of. Monica Schiaffi will step in, the right fielder. With two down, will Lincoln Sudbury try and put a suicide squeeze play on? Little chin music there, one and oh. Can't have this many police officers and firefighters for a finger injury. I'm not quite sure. This is up the middle, picked up by the shortstop, throw to first. And it is not in time, the run scores. Very close play. But an RBI single for Monica Schiaffi. Well, Lee's Diamond comes around to score and tie this game up at three apiece. Margaret Coster, the third baseman, steps in to the right-handed batter's box. The leadoff hitter. Ball's going to drop into left field, the throw to third base. And it's an overthrow, and everybody is going to be safe. Siafi up to third, a single by Costa. She advances on the throw in. Ava Lynch will step in. There was a little bit of a defensive breakdown there. The throw came in. Catcher decided to go over to the backstop to chase it, realized she would be abandoning home plate, and then let, let the third baseman run over and get it. The Hillers will have an infield conference in the pitcher's circle. A town meeting, if you will. Stepping in for Lincoln Sudbury, Ava Lynch, the second baseman. She is one for three so far today. Singled in, scored a run in the first. We are now tied up at three apiece. Here in the top of the sixth. Third baseman can play in shallow here. Upstairs. Meet part of the order for Lincoln Sudbury. 
The 1-0. Fouled away. Ooh, almost to the nappy mobile. One and one. Your car is dodging all sorts of bullets today. I don't think I'm going to park there anymore. Jillian Cedia was down the left field line. Juliana Cedia was warming up. Down low. Nice block by Stevens. No force out there, so the ball hit to the infield. It's got to be thrown to first base. And this is ripped up the right side, picked up by Whalen, and the flip to first, not a problem. And after the top of the six, we are tied up at three apiece to the bottom of the inning we go. Tied up at three on H Cam. Bottom of the sixth inning, we are tied up at three apiece between Lincoln Sudbury and Hopkinton. Due up for the Hillers is Catherine Morse, the first baseman. Emma Mahoney remains out in the pitcher's circle. That pitch down low, one and oh. Can in the bottom or the top of the seventh will have to face Lincoln Sudbury's three, four, and five hitter. Popkin didn't play to run here, give her a little cushion. Up the middle, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, one away. Four to three on the out, Sienna Harrigan, the right fielder, will step in. Swing and a miss. Let her high fastball, Emily Whalen on deck. She'd like nothing more than to have a runner in scoring position. That's fouled off the catcher, 0-2. Give it a piece of the umpire too. Catcher going to give the umpire a little courtesy time. The 0 2 fouled off. Staying alive. into the backstop. Good battle here between Harrigan and Mahoney. What's Harrigan hitting this year, Tom? I'll get you those numbers in just a moment. Things are awful quiet here. Things are a little tense. Straight strike, strike three. three. Two away, and that'll bring up Emily Whalen. That won't help her batting average any. She's hitting a 250 heading into today. Four for 16 overall. And now Emily Whalen, who's stepping in, hitting a 471 heading into today's game. Eight for 17 overall. They're playing left fielder in as a bunt. A little bloop foul, and the catcher not able to get there. They're positioning their right fielder really shallow and their left fielder shallow, but their center fielder's playing a little bit deep. Whalen hit a double in the second inning to drive in a run and also scored a run. That pitch down low. Good take by Whalen. There's the 1-1, one, one, and she'll get a piece of this over to center field, and it's over the reach of the center fielder. Wayland around second, heading over to third, and she is going to be safe with the triple. A two-out triple for Wayland. Amanda Quirk, a little misjudgment of the softball in center field. 
And now the Hillers with a big opportunity here as Tori Fisher will step in. She turned the wrong way on that ball, Quirk did, and it was over her head and off to the wall, and Emily Whalen was thinking three all the way. Ball gets by the catcher. She will scamper home. Ball up high. One and O oh on Fisher. Fisher came into the game earlier for Kristen McCluskey. He was shooken up with a finger injury. It was a tragic, tragic injury. A meeting on the mound. Maybe it's to talk about Whalen on third, who's going to cover on a bunt situation. Katie Hall, he's due up next. They need to go after the hitter. Of course, Emily Whalen will be off on contact with two outs. Just inside, two and O. Oh. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to be with you on this Tuesday afternoon for Hiller, Hiller's softball. John Ritz on camera. Mahoney doesn't want to lose Fisher. Swing and a miss. A late swing there. Looks like Hopkins and Finest have seen enough. Swing and a miss, two and two. Mahoney's got to bear down here, and make this pitch count. Two two pitch. Up the middle and bobbled by the pitcher, picked up, throw to first, not a problem. A nice job by Emma Mahoney keeping her cool after the bobble there. And that'll retire the side and the bottom of the sixth to the seventh we go. We are tied up at three apiece here at Hopkinton High School on HCAM. My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. I'm Gunny. I'm Haley. Hi, my name is Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Alma and Gal, and we love HCAM. Hey, I want to be HCAM. We love HCAM. And I volunteer for HCAM TV. I watch HCAM TV. And I love HCAM TV. And I love HCAM TV. We love HCAM TV. Woo! Top half of the seventh inning. We are tied up at three apiece between Lincoln Sudbury and Hopkinton. Three, four, and five do up for Lincoln Sudbury as Kirsten Kelly takes a ball. Kirsten Kelly, Amanda Quirk, and Jen Gross. Three, four, and five hitters. Ripped up the middle past the reach of everybody, and it's going to be a leadoff single. I'll bring up Amanda Quirk, the center fielder. As I mentioned earlier, they have not tested Carly Stevens behind the plate. They're going to have a little discussion as to whether they're going to sacrifice, I'm sure. But do you sacrifice with your four hitter? Coach Shannon Albury taking the time to have some words of encouragement for her pitcher, Charlotte Can. Line up and the pitch. Slow roller up the middle, picked up by the shortstop, flipped a second for one, and that's all they'll get, but it was well worth it. Alyssa McIntyre probably should have taken the ball herself as opposed to flipping it to Whalen. So, Amanda Quark reaches on the 6-4 to four force out. Jen Gross, the first baseman, steps in. Upstairs. Down low, 2 and 0. Oh. You don't want to allow any free passes here, Tom. Make them earn it. Three and oh. 
Outfielders playing deep for Grouse. Rio pitch, there is ball four. Quirk up to second, Gross at first, and Mahoney to the plate. She's gonna get the ball taken from her, they're gonna bring in Cedia, the lefty. So that will do it for Charlotte Can, a new pitcher for the Hillers. Juliana Cedia going to take over in the pitcher's circle. And it was a pretty well-pitched game by Can. Sure it was, Tom. One of the better ones we've seen this season. She ended up going six and a third overall. And she gave up 13 hits, three runs against a very good Lincoln-Sudbury lineup. But a pretty well-pitched game, to say the least, for Can. She had five strikeouts in the performance. Juliana Cedia takes over for the Hillers here in this top half of the seventh. A 3-3 game. And Lincoln Sudbury certainly threatening with two on and one out. So far this season, Juliana Cedia has a 4-12 ERA, 17 innings pitched. She's given up 17 hits, 11 runs, 10 of which were earned and struck out 14. We are ready to continue on as Emma Mahoney steps in. Cedia deals down low, one and oh. Lincoln Sunbury bench a little animated, trying to rattle Cedia a little bit. Fouled away, one and one. And a slow roller up the first base side, picked up, and stepping on the bag for the easy out is Catherine Morse. Both runners advance, Cork up to third, Cross up to second. Very late swing. Three unassisted there for the second out. Ali's Diamond, the catcher, steps in. I thought that ball was going to take a bad hop on the base there, and that could have been trouble. Down low. Well, now with the runner at third, you certainly have to be careful to not have a wild pitch. Pitchers are going to pop right off the mound to cover home plate. Fouled away. One and one. We'll be having varsity baseball next week up at field two with our new camera booth up there or nest or whatever you want to call it. Up the middle and Whalen makes the dive but does not have a play but she's gonna throw the whole plate to get the secondary run that was attempting to come in. And that is a great play there by Whalen to get the out. But scores and the run. Plate, but a run does score, and it's four to three to Lincoln Sudbury as we head to the bottom of the seventh on H Cam. Bottom of the seventh, Lincoln Sudbury has the four to three lead. But Emily Whalen made a great play, a great throw to home plate to get Jen Grouse trying to score after Amanda Quark was able to score on the hit by Elise Diamond. A foul ball went up on the track up there in left field area. Somebody better get on that ball. Three, four, and five for Hopkinton. Katie Holly two for two today with a walk. Gets a piece of this one up the middle, and her day at the plate remains perfect. 
A leadoff single for Holly, and now Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop, will step in. Katie Holly has great speed, so any bobble by the catcher, she's going to go. They need this run badly. Emma Mahoney deals upstairs. Holly takes off up to second. She's safe. Good steal there by Holly. Did I just say she was going to grab a bag? You did. I did. Now with Holly's scoring position. Will they put the bunt on and move her over? The 1-0. Ripped up the left side, picked up by the shortstop. Throw to first. Just got her. And I guess uh, they just got her. That was very close. One away. Holly stays put at second. Jordan Chevery will step in. She's two for three today. Sing, pair of singles and reached on an error. I thought Holly would have run as soon as the shortstop let go of the ball, but she stayed. Outside and it gets away from the catcher. Holly up to third. Tying run is 60 feet away. Ooh, this is getting exciting. It certainly is. Pass ball there. Now the 1 0 pitch to Chevery. Juliana Cedia do up next. And she'll get a piece of this in the center field. It goes, and we are tied up at four apiece. An RBI single for Chevery. Katie Hawley comes around to score, and that'll bring up Juliana Cedia. Un, deux, trois for Jordan Chevery. That's one, two, three in French, Tom. There you go, Larry. Glad to have you here on this broadcast to contribute little factoids just like that. Un de toi, un de toi. There's a strike to Cedia. She thought about it. Chevrolet's got speed. Will they test the arm of the Sudbury catcher? Fouled into the backstop, 0 and 2. So it's a runner on first for the Hillers. A run already in to tie things up at four. And there's one out in the inning. You know what I say, Tom? Let her swipe the bag. Make the catcher throw her out. Up high. Obviously the coach disagrees with me. One and two on Cedia. Down low, two and two. Cedia fouls this into the backstop. Count remains two and two. You can feel the tension in the air down here at the turf field. Tie score. Winning run on first base. Two down. One down. I stand corrected. One down. Full count now on Cedia. To up next is Carly Stevens. Swing and a miss, two away. Carly Stevens will step in. She's one for three so far today. No chances on the base pass there. 
Winning run at first base. Gets a piece of this over to right field and it's caught. And we are heading to extras here at Hopkinton High School. It's a four to four ball game. Top of the eighth coming up next on HCAM. Top of the eighth inning. We have entered extra innings here at Hopkinton High School as Ellie Marchand, the center fielder, steps in to face Juliana Cedia. A four to four ball game. First pitch is a strike, 0 oh and 1. Extra innings, extra pay. Like it. Absolutely. Marshan one for three today. Upstairs. One and one. Down low at the feet, two and she one. She got hit. Well, they'll give her the bag there. Hope she's all right. <laughs> Home plate umpire is going to check with the first base umpire to see if, in fact, it was a hit oh, bats woman. I don't know. I thought she jumped she out agree. of the way. I thought she skipped out of the way, but we've been overruled. Monica Schiaffi will step in. One pulled back, but it is strike one. Heads up play by Harrigan on the back pick, running in the back up first base. Two well-coached teams today, Tom. Certainly is. That pitch outside, runner taking off from first, throw to second. No, not in time, says the umpire. I don't know. He says Alyssa McIntyre got her high on the hip. Alyssa McIntyre, I'm sure, disagrees. That's a stolen base. A oh. Straight steal. Runner in scoring position, no outs. CD deals, the bunt. Slow roller, fair ball. Picked up by the catcher, throw to first, they get the out. But the lead runner advances to third, so now it's a runner on third with one out. So Shiafi gets the job done. Two to three on the out. That'll bring up Margot Costa, the third baseman. And the leadoff hitter. So she can handle the bat. CD has got to really bear down. And therefore, strike. Set to deliver. Just up high. One and one. Media deals, and that's a fair ball, or is it? No, it's foul, one and two. We can't hear the umpire. Outside, two and two. Just checked out the bleachers behind home plate. It's packed. Overflow crowd. Down low. Counts full. Strike Swing three. and a miss. Two down. That'll bring up Ava Lynch, the second baseman. Miller's right back in action tomorrow afternoon against the good Milford team. It has certainly been a great game here today. 
CD really has to pop off that mound just in case there's a bunt attempt. The runner at third. That pitch just high. Two outs, runner on third. We remain tied at four here in the top of the eighth. And there for a strike. The umpire's been very generous with the outside corner on right-handed hitters. And there's another strike. Two and two. Can't be admiring pitches with a go-ahead run on third base. Set to deliver. Just outside, that'll fill up the count. CD is showing good composure here for a freshman put into a pressure situation. Strike three. There's strike three. Got her looking despite a runner reaching third base with one out. No runs come around for Lincoln Sudbury, and we will head to the bottom of the eighth, tied up at four on HCAM. Bottom of the eighth inning, a four to four ball game. As the Hillers step into the batter's box, Catherine Morse is in the right-handed batter's box and she'll take ball one, eight, nine, and one, due up for the Hillers. Catherine Morse, Sienna Harrigan, and Emily Whalen. Warm-up activity in the bullpen for Lincoln Sudbury. Lefty throwing, just in case. Ball high. Two and oh. Catherine Morris 0 for 3 at the plate so far today. Up the middle, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, one away. Sienna Harrigan, the right fielder, will step in. Emily Whalen to up next. You'd love to get a hit out of your nine hitter. Ball up high. high. To turn the lineup over to Emily Whalen. The 1 0. Fought off foul, 1 and 1. Down low. Ball gets a little tight in these situations. Two one. And this is hit in the air and caught by the second baseman. Two way. Emily Whalen will step in. She's two for four today. Has also driven an in a run and scored a run. He tripled their last time up. Lincoln Separy gonna play back, no doubles. Mavel Lynch, the second baseman, playing pretty far in. That pitch inside, one and oh. Upstairs, two and O. Oh. Fisher waiting on deck. She came in to play third base. Gets a piece of this one over to right field, and it's past the reach of the right fielder. Whalen going to head over to second. It's picked up in the outfield as Whalen heads to third, and she's aboard with a two-out triple. It was they were playing deep, too. 
ball was just over the, the glove of the right fielder. And we'll bring up Tori Fisher, who's 0 for 1. We're actually 0 for 2 at the plate so far today. Emily Whalen's going to try and put pressure on the catcher by coming down the line as if to swipe a bag. But any bobble by the catcher, she's going to go and try to win the game. Down low. It's been a strike all day. One and O. Oh. Winning run at third base. Two outs, though, for the Hillers. Fouled away. Nice hack at that one. Tough position to be in coming into the game late for an injury. Katie Holly do up next if Fisher should reach. And if Whalen is not able to score. Swing and a miss. One and two. Very late cut by Fisher. She had zero at bats coming into this game, right? She could be the hero right here. Fouled away. Stays alive. Infield playing back. They're going to make a play at first base. The one two. Fouled away. Good battle. And another foul ball, and just, just the clears my car. <laughs> it's like your car's invisible today, Tom. Oh. The game's still going, so we'll see. Just high. Good eye, good take. Two and two. No matter what happens here, this has been quite the at-bat by Fisher. Wish they'd get the game over to get in my hot dog time. Foul back. Now remains two and two. Been about an eight pitch at, eight pitch at bat so far. Fisher is not going down without a fight. Sitting on a fastball. Swing and a miss. Out number three. And that'll wrap up the eighth inning. To the ninth we go. We're knotted up at four on HCAM. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Top of the ninth inning. We're tied up at four between Lincoln, Sudbury, and Hopkinton. And the first pitch from Cedia to Kelly is a strike. 0 oh, and 1. She's going to be facing the meat of the Lincoln Sudbury order, 3, 4, and 5. Down low. It's been a well played game by both of these teams. A lot of fun to watch. Miller's had the winning run last inning at third, and it was a great battle. As this is hit in the air, over to the second baseman. Whalen with the glove flip to first, and she got her. That's a tremendous defensive play. She knew what she was going to do. She knew she had to flip the ball. No time to put it in her hand. And a quirk steps in. That's a big get right there. That's Tori Fisher with a nine pitch at bat. And Unfortunately, could not get a hit to drive in Whalen, but certainly gave a good battle. As that is out number two, fly ball 
Over to the left side, handed by, handled by the shortstop, Alyssa McIntyre. Very aggressive, the Lincoln Sudbury hitters. Not making Cedia throw any pitches. He's going right after it. Jen Grouse, the first baseman, steps in and takes strike one. No and one. Top half of the ninth inning. We're tied up at four. Two outs for Lincoln Sudbury. Juliana Cedia came into the game in the sixth inning and did a, has done a tremendous job in the pitcher's circle so far. Came in in the seventh inning, rather. If you're wondering what the Hillers have in the bottom half of the ninth inning, they have three, four, and five hitters. Swing and a miss. One and two. You couldn't have got that pitch with a nine iron, Tom. One two pitch from Cedia. Fouled away down the first base side. Hopkinton is playing with two of their starters out of the lineup today. Jillian Cedia and Bella Anzi. And this is up the middle. That is going to get through into center field, a two out single. We'll bring up Emma Mahoney, the pitcher. It's a runner on with two outs for Lincoln Sudbury. You don't want the ball hit over any of the outfielders' heads here. Got to keep the ball in front of you. Emma Mahoney 0 for 4 today. Takes a strike there. Hiller's employing a no doubles defense in left and center field. Upstairs. The 1-1 one, one, down low. CD is just taking a walk around the pitcher circle. Now she's ready to throw. Outside, three and one, checking at first, runner back safe. Carly Stevens was trying to catch her sleeping. The three one, in there for a strike, full count. The runner will be taking off on pitch release. 3-2, two, two, two out, 4-4 four, four tie. Hit high in the air, Wayland backpedaling makes the catch for the third out of the top of the ninth to the bottom of the inning we go. We remain tied at four apiece between the Hopkinton Hillers and Lincoln Sudbury. Bottom of the ninth, a new pitcher for Lincoln Sudbury, Emily Fisher has entered the game to take over for Emily Mahoney. It was a great appearance by Emily Mahoney on the mound, but of course, you certainly don't want to leave your main starter out there too, too long. Especially in this heat. So Emily Fisher will take over. Emily Mahoney went eight innings in total as Katie Hawley is set for the first pitch, and she'll rip that one foul, 0 and 1. 3, 4, and 5 do up for the Hillers. Katie Hawley, Alyssa McIntyre, and Jordan Chevery. Part of the, the part of the order you want up if you're Hopkinton. Hawley had a very aggressive cut on that first pitch. And that is a bunt foul, 0 and 2. Oh, down two strikes, she's gonna be in protect mode. Emily 
Fisher set to deal as that's fouled off on the track. Cal remains 0 and 2. Emily Mahoney went eight innings, giving up 13 hits. Four runs, nine strikeouts. Three of those runs were earned. And there's strike three to Holly. That is the first time today that Katie Holly did not reach base. I'll bring up Alyssa McIntyre, who is one for four today. Lincoln Sudbury pitcher just climbed the uh, climbed the ladder with Katie Holly. There's a line drive in the left field that gets down. And it's bobbled by the left fielder, but it is going to be a single for McIntyre. So the winning run is aboard for the Hillers. And that'll bring up Jordan Chevery. One out single there. Jordan Chevery so far today, three for four, also reached on an error. Three singles in the game, plus a run batted in. Will there be any movement on the bases? Yes, there is. McIntyre going down, she's safe. Good stolen base, Alyssa McIntyre. Good steal there by McIntyre, just beating the throw. And that was a pretty good throw as well from the catcher. I thought she might have left a little bit early. The umpire didn't see it, so it's a good steal. Now she's in scoring position. The 0-1. Swing and a miss. Fouled away. Oh. Oh, and two is the count on Chevery. Last time she had two strikes on the hitter, she went upstairs. And that one down low. One and two. Good stop by the catcher. One out, runner on second for the Hillers. A one and two count on Chevery. Tied at four apiece here in the ninth. That's fought off foul. One and two remains the count. Juliana Cedia waiting on deck. And this is up the right side. That's going to get through. And the lead runner is going to be waved around. Now she's caught in a bit of a pickle. Throw to third. It'll get away, but she's going to stay put. Good back up by the left fielder. The game would have been over. So Alyssa McIntyre stays put at third. It's a single for Chevery. She advanced the second on the throw in. Looked like Alyssa slipped on the turf. It's one of the downfalls of the turf. Your legs are going to come out from under you. There's a meeting on the mound now. Juliana Cedia has a chance to win the game for the Hillers as well as her pitching record. Fly ball will do it. And there'll be a meeting of the minds in the pitcher's circle. Juliana Cedia at the plate this season is three for nine overall. Four runs scored, three driven in. She has a big opportunity here. She'll get the win. She certainly will. Her pitching record would increase to three and oh if she's able to drive in the winning run here. One out in the inning, runners on second and third for the Hillers. Chance to win the game right here for Juliana Cedia. There's strike one. And 
Emily Fisher, the pitcher, set to deliver. Inside, one and one. That Carly Stevens waiting on deck. Fouled away. One and two. Swing and a miss, out number two. Now the infield can play back. Outfield can play a little deeper now. Carly Stevens, the catcher, steps in with two outs. Fouled away. She's not waiting for a walk, she's ripping. Carly is one for four today. Down low. Runner from third was halfway down the line. One and one. Up the left side, picked up by the third baseman, throw to first in time. And we are heading to the 10th inning, tied up at four apiece on HCAM. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Weston Nurseries located at 93 East Main Street. Visit their garden centers in Hopkinton or Chelmsford and discover limitless possibilities to create your backyard paradise. Find them online at westonnurseries.com. Top of the 10th inning, we are knotted up at four apiece. Seven, eight, and nine due up for Lincoln Sudbury. As Cedia delivers the first pitch of the inning and it's hit in the air, Katie Holly ranges over to make the catch for the one pitch, one out. Well, he's diamond flying out, now Ellie Marshan will step in. Well, the Hillers had Two runners on, last inning in scoring position with one out but could not capitalize. That pitch inside, one and oh. Marshan, one for four today, has also reached on an error. Inside, two and oh. CD is showing a lot of composure. Certainly is. Juliana Cedia came in the game with one out in the seventh inning as this is hit to Whalen. Throw to first, not a problem. Four to three, four out number two. She's yeah. like a vacuum cleaner out there, Emily Whalen. Monica Siafi will step in. Media deals, swing and foul. Oh and one. Who do the Hillers have coming in the bottom of the 10th? It'll be eight, nine and one. There's a strike, oh and two.
And this is up the left side, off the third baseman, and that is going to be a hit for Shiafi. Two out single, and that'll bring up Margot Costa. Top of the order for Lincoln Sudbury. You don't want to give up a hit to the nine hitter. Outside. CD is set to deliver the 1 0. There's a strike. One and one. We're in the top of the 10th inning. Here at Hopkinton High School on this Tuesday afternoon. Pitch outside. Cedia plays ball all through the summer. Plays club ball in Concord, along with Charlotte Can. 2-1, fouled away, 2-2. Two two. Deuces wild, 2-2 two, two and two out. CD deals, and this is ripped over to left field, and off the wall it goes. Lead runner heading over to third. Will she be waved around? Yes, she will, and she'll slide in safely. Lincoln Sudbury has taken the lead, and the ball also got away from the catcher, so advancing to third is Ava, uh, Margaret Costa after she had that nice hit all the way into left field. An RBI double, she advances on the throw in. And it's five to four, Lincoln Sudbury. I'll bring up Ava Lynch. Well, tough break there for the Hillers. Now Juliana has to field their position. Any ball that gets behind the catcher, she's gotta be right there. CD is set to deliver. And this is hit in the air over to center field. Katie Holly's there to make the catch for out number three. But Lincoln Sudbury does get the go ahead run. And they lead it five to four as we head to the bottom of the 10th on H cam. Bottom of the 10th inning for the Hillers. Eight, nine, and one do up. Catherine Morris will step in. And Lee Fisher out there for another inning of work. For Lincoln Sudbury, who now has a five to four lead. Hiller is going to have to create some offense here to extend this game. And this is up the left side, foul, 0 oh and one. Catherine Morris is 0 oh for four today. Hillers 3 and 0 heading into this game. Lincoln Sudbury 2 and 1. That pitch outside 1 and 1. Two up next is Sienna Harrigan. Hillers want a base runner so they can get to Emily Whalen with a runner in scoring position. And this is up the middle, bobbled by the second baseman into center field. It goes. A leadoff single for Catherine Morse, or maybe an error depending on how you want to score it, and Sienna Harrigan will step in. Will they put in a pinch runner for Morse? Apparently not. And this is hit in the air. The second baseman ranging over makes the catch. One away. I'll bring up Emily Whalen, the second baseman. One on, one out for the Hillers. A 5-4 Lincoln Sudbury lead here in the bottom of the 10th. You 
Emily Whalen can really handle the bat. She can put the ball in play anywhere. Inside. Fisher set to deliver the 1 0. One foul, one and one. Lincoln Sudbury's outfielders are playing as deep as they played all game. Whalen tripled earlier. And she'll get a piece of this foul. One and two. Time called by the hitter. Tori Second baseman playing in very, very shallow. Tori Fisher is due up next. Outside. Two and two on Whalen. The second baseman being in so shallow. They won't get the runner at second base. And Whalen gets a piece of this. Over to left field it goes. That's a fair ball and everybody's safe. First and second with one out. Tori Fisher will step in. Fisher so far 0 for Three since coming into the game for the injured Kristen McCluskey. And gets a piece of this slow roller, picked up, throw to first. They get the out, but the job is done by Fisher as she pushes both runners up. There is two outs, however. You got Emily Whalen on second base. Ball hit to the outfield. She will score and walk off if Katie Holly can get the ball down. Well, this is who you want up if you're the Hillers. Katie Hawley, three for four today with a walk. Two runs scored. Fouled away. She's not looking for a walk. She's looking to make contact. She waited long enough, she steps out of the batter's box. Little mind game going on here. The 0 1. Fouled away. 0 and 2. Down to her last strike. Runners on second and third for the Hillers. Two outs. Katie Hawley at the plate. Lincoln Sudbury leading 5 to 4 in the bottom of the 10th. Just outside, one and two. Very close pitch. Holly, the senior captain, has got a chance to do something here. Catherine Morris at third, Emily Whalen at second. Up high, two and two. Could hear the oohs and ahs from the crowd. Wasn't that close? Well, I'd say uh, you got your money's worth today. Two and two. This is up the right side, bobbled by the first baseman. She picks it up, steps on the bag. And 
ran into the runner as well. And Katie Holly seems to be a little shooken up, but it was a three unassisted. And that is, I believe, going to end the game. So that was the third out, the umpire checking in on Katie Holly. And that will indeed end the game. So I don't know, I was looking for maybe an interference call of some sort there, but you're not going to get it. Lake and Sudbury comes away with the five to four, 10 inning win. Certainly a tough loss if you're the Hopkinton Hillers, but a very fun ball game to watch here on this Tuesday afternoon. The final score for the final time, Lincoln Sudbury takes down the Hillers in 10 innings by a final of five to four. For John Ritz on camera, my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching Hopkinton Hillers Softball on HCAM. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day. We'll talk to you again soon.